My name's Alan Hart and today we're going to show you how to use a Testo 300 flue gas analyzer. So I've got Testo here with me today. This is the first time I'm actually going to be using this flue gas analyzer. So they're going to show me how to use this and hopefully you'll pick some up from this video as well. So let's get on with it. My name's Alan Hart. So we've got the main man from Testo here to tell us all about it. So would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, it's John Borden, product manager from Testo. And obviously today we're gonna to look at the Testo 300 flue gas analyzer, and some of the functionality. So let's get it started. Switch on on the side, screen's lit, we're ready to go. So the first thing to talk about is connecting the flue gas probe because obviously it needs this to be sampling from the flue. Um, connector on the Testo, a little bit different to other ones out on the market. It's a single connector, so basically it's just line up the arrow on the device, connect and lock in. That's bringing the gas pathway straight down. Obviously you've got to put the flue probe in the flue as well. So we'll put that on the boiler. Just, just before you do that, could you just tell us about the end on there? Yeah, no problem. That's different, isn't it? Than yeah, the primary filter on the Testo is at the end, so it's a quick change filter. Basically, you can take that out. If it's wet or moist, it can be air dried. If it's an oil fire appliance, it gets sooty. Chug it away, get a new one. How often do you need to change them? It really no, depends. On, it really depends on how much you're using it and the type of appliances you're using it on. Right. Okay. So we're good to go now. Obviously, just loosen the cone off. Up on top of the boiler, test point. Put the code in and then we're looking probably for about half the way depth into the flue and just lock off on the cone. So we're now ready when the boiler is actually going to be fired up. We're going to be sampling the gases down through here into the instrument, through the pump and into the sensors. And is it, it's important it, when we're doing a flue gas analyzer test that we make sure we put the probe in the right position. What I see, I have a lot of trainees that come with me and often they'll, they'll tilt it downwards and it can actually suck in the water from the inner flue. So it's important that we locate that and we don't, we don't want to be sucking yep. water into the... Absolutely, you've always got that danger. If you put the probe in too far, it's going to pick up the pools of condensate and suck them straight into the instrument. Absolutely correct. Right, okay. So what we're going to do with this, we're going to do a flue gas analyzer test. So what do we do to start with? Okay, so when you power the instrument up, it automatically boots up into flue gas test as being the, the first test. Yeah. If you wanted other test functions, you would just go into the drop down menu and select the test you want but it will always initially start up in flue gas. So effectively you've got the probe in to the flue, instrument sitting here, it's effectively ready to go. Right, okay, so what we'd, we'd have to zero this to start with. Yep, so ideally obviously you want to make sure it's zeroed and then, and then you're good to go. The quickest way to zero it is to basically remove the probe from the flue or just to disconnect the instrument. Again, we'll st start it up and we'll zero the instrument. It's ready to go. Okay, so that's it. We're now sampling, you can hear the pump running, and now boiler's running, we'd actually get the values start to appear on the instrument. So depending on the boiler, we'd read the manufacturer's inst the instructions for the boiler. Sometimes we'd run a hot tap, and we can get a reading from just the hot tap, and that'd be the reading we'd be using. Other times we might be using it in high and low. Fire, yep. So again, we'd be looking at the manufacturer's instructions. So on this particular boiler, we can turn it on, and then we can put this into service mode on here. We just click onto these two outside buttons. Go on to number one, that takes us onto high rate. So the boiler will come on and then we'll get us reading on here. And obviously we'll be referring to the manufacturer instructions as always to see what this reading should be. But we've moved the ratio on this, which we can show how to do that, can't we? Yep. Uh, but we've put the ratio at the top on this flue gas analyzer. So what we'll do shortly, we'll get a reading on here. So as I say, we've put this into service mode. We've put it into service mode on high, put it onto number one there. And then we're getting a reading on here. You can zoom in to this reading. This is a little bit like an Android. Yes, yeah, it's an Android operating system. So you've got all the, the swap, yeah, all the swipe gestures. So to make the screen bigger or smaller, it's basically a sort of swipe with finger and thumb. So you can actually make the screen as big or as small really as you want to see it. You can also do a sideways swipe to some other, other functionality in the instrument. But here you can see now we've actually got readings for ratio, got the CO carbon monoxide readings, your O2 oxygen, calculates the CO2 and obviously the flue temperature as well. 
So now, once we've allowed this to settle a little bit, how do we save these results? Okay, so once you're happy that the instrument, the, the, the boiler has settled and you're ready to take the readings, obviously it's, it's taking the readings live at the moment, you would just stop the readings by stopping the pump running with the um, command here in the middle. So if I stop that now, yeah. that's now frozen the readings, you can see there. So now we would actually go to the command here, which is to either print the results yeah. or to send the results to the internal memory to save them. Right. Or if you had the second screen functionality connected up with the app, you can actually now look at the readings on the app, save them and email them direct from the app. Right, okay. So very, very quick and easy to get the combustion readings from, from the boiler straight onto the instrument. Right then, John, do you want to show us how we do testing, how we do pressure testing with this analyzer? Yeah, absolutely. There's two ways you can use the Testo 300 for doing pressure testing. Um, option one is to use something like the Testo 510i smart probe. So the smart probes can connect to the 300 via Bluetooth. Um, so with this device, for example, you could do a burner test in conjunction with the, the uh, combustion testing. What you can't use this for is your tightness and let by testing. If you're going to do that, what you would use is the adapter that comes with a kit. And this basically has an adapter, it looks like the bottom half of the flue gas sampling probe, but it adapts the instrument. So rather than the uh, pathway being for combustion gases, this is for pressure. So basically you basically use that in conjunction with a suitable hose. And that way you would do your tightness and let by testing using that adapter. But if you just want to do general gas pressure testing, it's probably easier to use the Testo 510i. And the, the advantage of that is you do get the readings in conjunction with the combustion readings. Right, okay. So if you had two of these then, so we could put one at the boiler, we could test the inlet pressure at the boiler, and could we put one at the gas meter as well? Yeah, absolutely correct. I mean, one of the benefits of the 300 is you can connect up to four smart probes. Um, typically, you'd be using one of the manometers and maybe some clamps for doing flow and return, but there's nothing to stop you actually having two Testo 510Is, and then you could have one at the meter, one at the appliance, so you've got your two pressures and looking at any pressure drop. Yep. Right, okay. Would you like to show us how to connect? This? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll show you how to connect the, the Bluetooth devices, all very simple, whether it's the 510i or the 115s. These basically connect via this little adapter at the bottom, so that has to be plugged into the instrument. All we do on these, there's no pairing or anything required, just switch the device on. See initially it flashes an orange light and then we'll go to green. When it's showing green, that is showing it is pairing with the device. So we'll just switch these on as well. So this is your clamps for your flow and turn. And then what we can do in the instrument, we can go into the screen, look at device information for smart probes. And what this will now show us is the devices as they connect. So I can see now that the 510i is connected one of the clamps is connected and the next clamp will come up and appear here. So this is just giving verification that these devices have now all connected to the 300. If I now come out there and go back to our main screen, I can see at the bottom here, combustion readings at the top, and I've now got this other information displayed all on the one flue gas reading screen. So what we can now do is go ahead, zero this device first, because obviously we want to make sure that the pressure device is zeroed. So that's now zeroed the pressure. I can now connect my hose to the positive port on there, and that's ready now to connect to the gas um, valve on the boiler. But we can see now we've got pressure reading, we've got the flow uh, two pro flow probes, the flow and return, and the difference between them. But that's all now displayed basically on the same screen as your combustion reading. So it means you've got your combustion readings, your gas pressure, your flow and return, and in temperature difference on the flow and return, all on one report. So you can look at that on there. Yep or you could print it if you wanted to. Okay, yeah, again, so we've got those results. You could literally go here and just go print values and that will yeah. go to the Bluetooth printer or you can save them to a report in the device. So then you could email that. Right? Yeah, yeah, or you can or you can actually request um, the information via the second screen mode to your phone and just email direct from your phone. It's probably the right. easiest way. Okay, so then you can have a second screen mode? Yeah, second screen mode is, is used in two ways. You're using it for that reporting. The other really uh, cool thing about second screen mode is certainly on larger commercial boilers where often the sampling point is maybe away from the burner where you're doing the adjustments. It means you can set the 300 up at the, at the sampling point or measuring point at the back of the burner or back of the boiler, be around the front of the boiler where the burner is with your phone, looking at the combustion values live on your phone, and doing any adjustments you need to on the burner while switching the pump on and off directly via your phone. So John, you said that we could customize this the screen on here. 
Can you tell us a little bit more about that? How do you do that? Yes. How do you delete stuff off as well? Yeah, it's quite unique functionality with the tester. You're not set with a sort of pre prefix factory um, settings on the screen um, layout. So very simple to do. There's a little cogwheel uh, symbol at the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Tap on there, edit measurement view. So if we actually tap on that now, what this is showing us is the running order currently of the, the different variables on the screen. So for example, at the moment, ratio at the top, then we've got uh, PPM of carbon monoxide, then O2, CO2, flue temperature, etc. But you've got the option to change this around. So for example, if you're somebody who maybe doesn't want the ratio at the top, maybe you're a person who wants to have the flue gas temperature as the, the key value, you can just literally simply click and drag and that will move the running order around. You can also delete um, items out. So again, you can make the instrument display as much or as little information. If you want to delete something, for example, I'm gonna delete one of the efficiency readings, I can just tap on the bin and it will remove it. But if I want to add it back in, I just go to the add button, scroll through to find that value. So efficiency net, confirm, that's added, added it back in. So it's very simple to either remove or add to the running order. When you're happy with the running order that you've got, press confirm. And you can see now the ratio will actually change to the second one because I put the flue temperature at the top. Yeah. Very, very simple and easy. It means you can make the instrument really how set up to how you want to use it. Operator. And what if you want to change it then? Do you know for a different flue type? So let's say we're going to go to uh, LPG. Yep, so things like the uh, setting up of the uh, fuels and the other settings, again, very clear drop down menus. So the fuels is very easy. We've got here natural gas shown on the screen. If I tap the little arrow, that gives us a drop down menu again for the flue selection. So we've got natural gas, your bottled gases, your light and heavy oils, your wood pellets for the biomass boilers. So you can very simply select the fuel you want that's appropriate for the boiler you're working on. Other settings, the top right hand corner of the screen, there's a whole load of drop down boxes in here. You can, for example, set up um, your own company details. Yeah. So this will give you, if you like, your header for your PDF report that the instrument generates or that, that comes out on the second screen. There's lots of settings here where you can, again, you can tailor the instrument to suit your requirements. So this is if you print, when you print it out, that's what that would be. Yeah, if correct. You, if you use the printer. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously we're gonna try and avoid using printers nowadays. But if you are using printer, then it would do that. Yep. Right, John, so we spoke a little bit about the um, clamps. Yep. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about them? What yeah. What exactly are they called? Okay. How do you... Uh, so we know that the... Uh, the Testo, Testo 115i Bluetooth temperature clamp probes. This is part of the Smart Probe range. We've had the Smart Probes uh, available in our range for about five years now. Um, the connectivity of the 300, um, basically this device can connect to up to four probes at any one time. So your typical configuration is gonna be one of your 510s for gas pressure, two of the 115Is doing your flow and return uh, from your boiler, leaving you one spare probe. That could be, for example, we do a Testo 915I uh, probe for putting under running water, for doing sort of checking hot water temperature. Yeah. That would be your typical configuration. So it's a maximum of four probes. Um, but we've got to be clear, because the Testo Smart Probe range, is, it covers about nine different probes now. The only probes that connect to the 300 are the 115I clamps, the 510I manometer, or the 915i series of probes. Right. So for example, we do a, a 410, which is a smart probe designed for airflow, that doesn't connect to this device. So you've got to be clear which probes are connected. So also you can connect, if you didn't want to use the flue gas analyzer, you didn't need to use it. You were just doing, you were going around testing radiators. Yep. You could test these just with your app. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the real benefits of the smart probes from another perspective is, is these work not only with the 300, but we have a Testo smart app, it's free to download, runs on an Android phone or a um, Apple phone or tablet. Um, and what you can do with those is connect smart probes to your smart device, your phone or tablet and turn that into the measuring screen. With the use of the app, you can connect up to six smart probes right, of any yeah. mix to the app. So really, really powerful package. And if you're trying to balance three radiators, flow and turn on, on three radiators, you can do it with six clamp probes. And is there any other tips or any other tricks or all that you can tell us about this package? Yeah, so, what, do, what do we actually yeah, get? Yeah, so what we've got here is the Testo 300 Ultra Smart Kit. So the reason we call this the Ultra Smart Kit is this comes already with the three smart probes you see here. So the two clamps for doing flow and return, and then your 510i, your digital manometer for doing your gas pressure, 
instrument comes with the uh, adapter, the dongle already there. So this is, if you like, the top end of the 300 so range. Two of these. Two of these. One of these. One of these. And everything you see here, pressure adapter, analyzer, sampling. And you could buy a separate one of these if you wanted to test the the gas meter oh, it's a second and the violet at the same time. Correct, yeah. And they're reasonably low cost. None of the smart probes are much more than £100, so they're all fairly low cost devices. So if you wanted to add them to your toolbox, it's not going to break the bank. Good stuff. But with regards to batteries then in here, they're just standard batteries? Yeah, good point. Oh, all the smart probes run on uh, triple A's not uh, rechargeable, so easily replaced. Your um, typical lifespan on these is around about 120 hours of operating time. So again, they're not particularly hungry so on batteries. So keep them turned off to last a long time. Yeah, and if you do leave them switched off, if you switch off the analyzer or the app, and these realize the broadcasting basis to nothing, after 15 minutes, they will power down. And just one last tip as we're going into the sort of winter time now, um, it's always good practice not to keep the flue gas analyzers in the van, A for the theft aspect, but B, where you get the temperature change this time of year, which can be particularly severe if you've got a van parked in the sun, and then at night the temperature drops right off, you can get condensate build up inside the sensors. And this isn't only applicable to Testo, it's other flue gas analyzers as well. Just be aware, you can get issues. I've actually had a manometer years ago, because they, they used to be glass. Yep. And I actually had one of them freeze up many yep. years ago and that cracked. Yep. So I had to get a new yeah, one. Yeah, just good practice. You know, but the, these instruments, they don't like moisture into the sensors. And that could be moisture coming, as you said earlier, from the condensate being pulled through if the probe hasn't been positioned. But also you've got to be aware that with these devices, if you get condensate formed directly in the sensors, you can switch it on and you can get unstable results or it might throw you an error message. Sometimes if you get the instrument into warm air, dry air, and that just have it purging, that may well clear it. But it's just good practice. Bring your analyzer in at night so it's kept in the same temperature as your house. That will stop any problems from, that, from happening. Good stuff. So I'd like to thank John and Testo for, for arranging this and, and coming today Well, I invited them. So just thank them for that. I mean, it's really appreciated for the channel, for new people into the industry as well. Um, if you have got any questions, put them in the comments below and we'll try and do a follow up on this. So if there's any questions, we'll do a follow up. As I say, I'm gonna go down to Testo. We're gonna look at some more of their products, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And please remember that every penny that I earn from this YouTube channel, all the money that I get from Google is donated to charity. So it all goes to Candlelighters, which is a children's cancer charity. So just by liking, commenting, sharing, all that will help the charity. So once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.